Welcome back to another Slay the Spire stream. I'm your host, Vegetable Red. And today we're going to be starting off with a watcher run. We've been trying hard all week. have not gotten there. Apparently we didn't reach the boss last time with Watcher. So we're going to be forced into Lament or Max HP. Um, definitely can't get a Mega Elite Snipe because he's way late in the act. Hey, good morning, Saradimal. I'm doing good. Looks like there's no snipe at all, because there's two fights here, and then there's no way to get to a, an elite without fighting another one. Um, so I guess we're grabbing some max HP. Ouch. I'm doing good. Um, I'll probably need, like... Uh, a couple of minutes after the uh, after the stream to set up for the playtest. Hope that's okay. Can I get eruption double strike? No, but eruption is free, so might as well play it. I guess I could have fit a strike in there too with the miracle. Oops. Looks like we're getting there slowly. I guess I had lethal that turn also. Dot, dot, dot. I'll get there one of these days. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just I'll need a couple of minutes after the after the stream to set up the playtest because we set up a, a playtest for right after the stream. But I will need a couple minutes just to make sure things are working. Um, crazy good floor one card reward. I mean, it's not usually I want like an empty fist here, um, but these cards are all really good long term. Um. Probably going to be Rushdown. Uh, hard to question the benefits of a Rushdown in a Watcher deck. Foresight is also quite good. Okay. All right. See you around, Sir Artemal. Um, sure. I think we take a Rushdown, right? Could you tell your favorite design pattern? Um, I think I need more context, right? Because it's like, pr you probably mean game design. Um, uh, but I, I feel like game design doesn't really have like, doesn't do like design patterns. Maybe you're talking about software engineering. Because um, game design has like different lenses and like, uh, and so, yes, software. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm not a big, like, pattern person. Um, the uh, different different patterns have different uh, applications. Something I am fairly big on is, is MVC. Um, uh, I really appreciate specifically um, separating view logic from, from models. Um, the controller always gets a little bit wobbly in MVC. It kind of like depends on on the context and like what even is a controller is not super clear most of the time. Um, but having strict models that only know like how to upgrade themselves from one version to another and like what the data means and stuff, and then having um, uh, having views that present them is super useful because then you can have multiple different views for something. You can have a debug view. Um, so my, um, um, the, the game right now, the Rogue Executive, uh, part of the architecture is um, that there's sort of like a core process and it's designed to be moved onto another thread or perhaps um, become server authoritative. Um, and that, that sort of like core like simulation layer, in there you just say like, like enemy health minus one, right? And you're just like, done. Um, and behind the scenes, there's all this like crazy ass machinery where like that model is linked to the views that are presenting that to the user. And it like sends a message with a copy of of the uh, the model that it's attached to and says like, here's the new model, you need to update yourself. Um, and it's cre created a lot of problems um, that I have to solve, but um, it, it's really nice 
uh, when you're when you're dealing with like I want to add a new game feature, you just like you just add the game feature. You just like change people's health um, and don't worry about any of the UI presentation. Um, that stuff all gets handled automatically, and we're not like doing a wipe of the UI every frame either. We're not like updating it. Um, how would you program Slay's Fire mechanic where there are lots of buff and debuff? Um, the uh, so my um, I mean I basically have answered that question for my game because there are lots of buffs and debuffs. Um, I consider um, most of the properties of a character to be a stat. And stat is sort of a polymorphic list of um, of just I stats, right? And um, so most of them are like int stats, right? So like your health is a stat that goes from, in my game, 1 to 4 and Slay the Spire from uh, 1 to 1,000. Um, and... Uh, um, but there are other stats too, right? So like if you're AI controlled then like that's a stat and you're like target filtering is a property of that that statistic so other um so like things like temporary strength and things are also just stats um and they just have different code than int stats uh, okay let's take the rush down rush down's correct Okay, we're gonna vigilance defend here. I'm gonna go ahead and miracle out a strike too, uh, just so we can kill this Laos next turn. And I guess develop rush down. All right, double defend, split the lice, set it for lethal, get lethal. It's our first rushdown proc of the run. Wow, two floors, two potions. That's lucky. Uh, we're going to need to pick some damage. Um, we could pick pressure points. We haven't picked any other damage yet, so pressure points would be a, a high density of the deck's damage. Uh, we are against Hexaghost. Hexaghost has no split, so we can just stack up pressure points on him all day. Uh, main problem with that plan is uh, it runs into Gremlin Knob. And get splatted a little bit. You don't really want to have a. Uh, um, what should we call it? Pressure points against Gremlin Nub. Um, I just. I don't even think I really thought about my pathing enough this act. I guess I just was like, this path is suicide. This is five fights and then an elite, so I'm not going to do that. And that's the only decision I needed to make so far. So now I'm making more decisions. Um, it looks like we probably want to do this two elite path because two elites is going to be the max for the act if we don't want to fight a mega elite. I think we probably don't want to fight a mega elite. Actually, even if we did want to fight a mega elite, it would, we'd still only get two because we'd have to start with one of these two. Go over there. From where we are now. I guess we could theoretically reach this guy. Do those two. The only three elite path was the one that started with five fights that I'm already ineligible for. I think let's plan on doing this uh, question fight question... And then two elites line. Uh, we got lots of late fires with that, which is nice. Uh, if we decide to nope out of it, we can get a fire before the first elite and still get the two late fires. Okay, so we're doing the question mark. Uh, oh, wait, we should pick one of these cards. Jeez, uh, I almost just skipped this card award on accident. Uh, probably the cut through fate, right? Unless we, we want to do the pressure points thing. Um, but I think we need to cut through fate. Okay. We could remove a strike. Could heal for eight. I think we'll remove a strike. Now, we're not going to a shop anytime soon, so we don't need to save the money or anything. All right, now the pressure is on to pick another attack. We're going to need one. Uh, double defend, cut through fate. Uh. I'm actually going to restart the fight and drink the dex pot, or the blessing of the forge. Uh. Not a big fan of jawworm fights. 
I think it's going to be the Blessing of the Forge. Let's just play the whole hand. So upgrade this Miracle. And I will not double Miracle out a single strike. Alright, let's get mad. I'll go ahead and Miracle out this strike since we're in Wrath mode. Looking for lethal next turn. I think we're guaranteed to get it. Yep. All right, that's why we spend a potion because we might get another one. That was only a twenty percent potion. We're down to ten percent now. Um, Sands of Time versus Crush Joints. Uh, I kind of like Sands of Time. It retains, so it's kind of like card draw a little bit. Uh, it hit, can hit for 40. That's a lot of damage. I like Crush Joints too. Uh, Crush Joints is, is good for um, trying to do 4.5 times damage when you're in Divinity instead of 3 times damage. But we don't have a Divinity yet, so it's like Sans. Boss is Hexaghost. Alright, it's a two elite act, so I think we're going to reach in here pretty aggressively, at, probably at least three times. Alright, two for anchor is great. And I think we feel pretty good about two elites right now. Two potions, pr fairly good potions as well. And we're at 55. Grim and Nob's got nothing on that. Um, I think we're just going to eruption and all the damage. I guess I'll just draw the Ascender's Bane so that next turn I can Vigilance. I'll go ahead and Deck Spot Vigilance too. And then hopefully we draw Eruption again. Um, are you Eruption? You are. Great. That's lethal. Probably could have gotten better value out of that potion. I thought I might have to block again on turn two. Cloak class was great. Um, so we feel really good about the Sands of Time now. We want to be retaining ten cards a turn, basically, for Cloak Clasp. Um, Wallop's a really good card. Could take a second cut. Uh, hmm. I like Cut Through Fate because it lets us, like, spend cards in hand, but then still have 10 cards at the end of the turn for Cloak Clasp. So I think I'm going to take a cut over a Wallop. We've got a, a hell of a lot of card draw here. Rush down two Cut Through Fates. Alright. Um, we could try and take this route. It's a little bit easier, but... Um, I don't think we're too afraid of this hallway fight, and then uh, getting an extra elite for two fires seems great. First hard pool fight. Um, defend blocks out on turn one. Let's put this guy down to six, so that's a pretty good break point. And I'll draw the defend rather than the eruption, um, so that I can use the eruption next turn. Eruption on this allows kills him next turn. So we'll erupt this one. Maybe Sands of Time this one and strike that one, hopefully. I guess that's too much energy. So then it's like strike Vigilance, strike him, Vigilance blocks him, and then we block for one, two, three, four, five at the end, take two. Seems fine. Cloak Clasp is so insane. Alright, let's just bop him. Set him up to for lethal. I guess he's dead now. Okay. Uh, conclude is super good. I think we were probably done picking damage cards, but I won't skip a conclude. 
Alright. Getting Rushdown developed is nice. Being calm, also nice. Uh, it would be nice to get Sands of Time decosted before we wake him up, but this is such a good wake-up turn right now, I don't know if I can resist it. We can do Sands of Time next turn for three. Mm, I don't think that's happening, because like Sands of Time Miracle Vigilance can't happen. I think we are waiting. This turn's really not very good, though. I just, I don't want to get stuck in Wrath, so I don't think we can wake him up here. So we're kind of depending on Cut Through Fate to, like, draw us Eruption or something. Oh my god, it did. Uh, well, now we have 5 out of 7 to draw Vigilance. Uh, either this turn or next turn. Both are fun. Uh, I guess we have to play it now, huh? Yeah, I don't want to get get caught. Uh, we could cut through fate to shuffle. I kind of don't want Sands of Time to skip a shuffle anymore, but I think I'll I'll hold it one more time, hold it for the next draft, get it to zero. Uh, I think it's going to be, like, Defend, Strike, Potion. Maybe two strikes and a potion. This is sitting for 40, so we're hitting for, like, 49 at some point. Ideally, we draw Eruption and Conclude next turn. And then we hit for an extra 24. Um, 49 plus 24 is 73. Um... Plus maybe 14. 73 plus 14 is 87. So if we strike now, we get lethal. That's pretty persuasive. I'll do both. It looks like we're probably ending the fight soon, so... I'll block out. Okay, I guess we're not ending the fight. Oh wait, Cut Through Fate draws Eruption guaranteed. Is that lethal? So we do 7 plus 9 is 16, plus 40 is 56, plus uh, 24 is 80 exactly. How much energy is that? So this takes us down to 2, this stays at 2, and these cost 2, yeah. So we would end in Wrath with him at 5. Let me count that again just to make sure I'm right. 7 plus 9 is 16, plus 40 um, is 56, plus 24 is 80. Yep. Okay. Well, I guess we don't play Cut Through Fate then, since we want to Eruption Sands of Time and kill him next turn. So we double defend conclude. And now we blow him up. Okay. I've had much better uh, Log of Ulans as Watcher. That was not a great one. Could have been our second pressure points here. Uh, I don't hate having three cut through fates, but I think I think we've got enough attacks. Sands of Time, double cut, conclude is, is plenty. So I think we're skipping here. We could take a pressure points now. We've got two cut through fates and a rush down, so we can really draw through the deck quickly. Um, to scale up for bosses. We've got two fires, so we're probably taking upgrades at both. So if we upgrade um, pressure points, it hits for 11. Uh, Hexagos has, what, like 250 health? Um... Uh, 
Hexa Ghost. 264. What's what is why is it 264? That's like a very precise number. Is that like divisible by 12 or something? It is. It's 22 when divided by 12. So it's 44 when divided by 6. I don't get it. Uh, what's 264's prime factorization? Um, what? So it's got an 11 in there, which is kind of weird. Three twos, a three, and an 11. Huh. Interesting. I don't think there's any, like, 11-based numerology with Hexaghost. But, like, why not 265, you know? Maybe it's a compromise of, of balance and numerology. Um, hmm... Is lots of card draw and pressure points good? Something about 44 strikes? What do you mean by that? What does 44 have to do with Hexaghost? Let's do pressure points. And Anne's Bonnet is into it. I'm into it. I want it to work. Got a mummified hand. Okay, new plan. Actually, mummified hand feeds really well into our current plan. So maybe not a new plan. Uh, we need to double defend here. Probably want to fit pressure points and conclude in as well. Means a miracle. Um, let's go ahead and just like vigilance strike. That seems fine. So he's dead to pressure points next time I play it. Um, if we want to wait that long. Oof. Um, I do not want to get hit for thirty this turn. Let's see what's in here. Uh, I guess evaluate blocks. I'll take the insight because it card draws, which could leave us with a larger hand and click class value at the end of the turn. Could have played um, rush down there to try to hit Sands of Time, which would block for a bunch by killing Acid Slime. So I conclude. Ouch. Getting hit for 14. Yeah, I know we have rush down. I, I, so I didn't play it specifically because I wanted extra block from Cloak Clasp. I don't want to play an unnecessary card. That was not a mistake. Aha! Mental Fortress seems like a mummified hand card. It also seems like a rushdown synergy thing with Jig. Um, sure. We've been hurt a little bit. Yeah, fasting's okay. I don't hate fasting. Um, 
I just I want to have a an, an idea for um, I want to pick the orange pellets before the fasting. You know, I don't want to have be trapped with a fasting in the deck that I don't want to play. Uh, if there's going to be a pressure points in the deck, it needs to be a pressure points plus. That's for sure. It scales a lot better as pressure points plus. Uh, we don't need many cards in hand at this turn. We can just end turn to block. Yeah, David Foreman would kind of do it too. David Foreman's not quite the same. Uh, we can just wait this turn and kill him next turn. I guess I could have killed him this turn with Sands of Time. On the Miracle. Whatever. Second Mental Fortress? Uh, okay. Maybe we're supposed to take an Empty Fist? We've already got a lot of attacks, though. And a Pressure Points. We need like a tantrum and an inner peace now. Uh, Sands Time has a nice upgrade. Um, it seems like eruption upgrade is pretty important if we're going to be doing rush down mental fortress stuff. So I think that's probably the next card to go. Um. So if we lose 11, we go to 20. That passes uh, a single Hexagos to Breakpoint of 24. Um, I think we probably still win the Hexagos fight and don't have to rest. So I think I'll do it. I'm willing to trade some health for, uh, for some gold here. Um... Upgraded cut through fates nice since we're trying to draw through the deck really quickly. Uh, upgraded orange pulse to help us block a little bit. Uh, Mental Fortress Plus blocks for six instead of four, which is nice. Um, definitely worth considering. I think the top tier here is like Mental Fortress conclude and cut through fates. Um, and then, like, Sands of Time, Vigilance, and then, like, Rush Down, and then the basics. Um, I think I'm not going to do Mental Fortress now, because it doesn't, um, it doesn't actually, like, um, what, what are the words I'm searching for here? We don't actually do, like, that much stands changing now. We've got no exits, and we've just got one Wrath Enter, one Calm Enter. So the Mental Fortresses are a little bit um, asleep. Uh, my tea is getting all tannic because I forgot to take the, the tea packet out. Oops. Um, is there anything we can upgrade to shore up birds? I'm not that afraid of birds. Um, that fight looks like hell right now. I'm not seeing it. Um, pressure points is super good against birds. We've got a pressure points in the deck. I think I'm just going to upgrade a cut through fate. I don't think there's an there's an obvious like I want a defensive upgrade because I'm a little bit afraid of being at twenty. But I don't think there's a good defensive option here. Uh, yeah, we're not going to drop him. We're just going to kill him. Uh, we do not want to play Eruption here. That would be very dangerous and uh, sort of reckless. Uh, why do I have five energy? Oh, HD set. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, birds, like, they're not that big of a threat. Um, they, they can do some damage for sure, but, like, we can just 
clock them down with Sands of Time eventually. And like pressure points is super, super good. Um, just hitting one bird for 22 with pressure points is, is going to be very helpful. Okay. He's only hitting for 12, so we can just Vigilance to block. Um, thanks for the follow, Peacefire. I thought you already followed, weren't you? I saw you in, uh, you showed up as a, as a, did you, like, already subscribe or something? And then not, just now follow. I'm a little bit confused by that. I'm sure I saw you before. Yeah, exactly. So you subbed, but you hadn't followed. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> How did that happen? Um, all the good stuff in the bottom of the deck. Can't play pressure points yet. Probably want to play Vigilance this turn. Um, and thanks for the follow. Grave RNG. Distracted by the quality content. Um, I guess if we... Okay, here's the here's something sneaky we could do. We could play Vigilance Strike Miracle Mental Fortress to get a 50-50 at decosting Saiyans of Time to zero right now. Um, not super necessary, but it would be fun. I'm going to save the Miracle and I'll just take a 1 out of 3. Oh, it hit it. We can cut through Fate, draw the other cut through Fate, and then... Cut through fate to shuffle, redraw Sands of Time, and decost it again with Rushdown. Alright, let's live that dream. Oh, actually, I'm going to restart the fight. Sorry, that dream was stupid, and I have a pressure points that I just forced to skip a shuffle. That was really dumb. There's no way that was ever correct. Okay. Uh, turn one was Mental Fortress Conclude. And then we played Vigilance, talked a bunch, and played Mental Fortress, hit Sands of Time. Okay. I think I still like um, Cut Through Fate uh, shuffling, but we're just going to play Pressure Points and then Cut Through Fate away everything and shuffle. So that maybe we draw, redraw Pressure Points. It's way more important than uh, hoping to decost Sands of Time with Rushdown. Um. If we do nothing, we take one damage. If we play Rushdown and, def and a Defend, we take none. Rushdown hits a Defend two-thirds of the time. Drat. We don't live in those two-thirds. Okay. Well, Strike Miracle Defend still doesn't take any damage. I think Miracle's worth uh, five health. That's fine. Ooh, we've got the Eruption uh, Vigilance line. Change all the stances. So we can, like... I guess we're going to pressure points Vigilance Conclude, because Conclude does as much damage as Strike. Hmm. This is awkward. We could not play Vigilance here. It's kind of dangerous. Um, but he doesn't attack next turn, and if we block pot, we only take four... Uh, wait, is random based on the run seed rather than the playtime chance? Yes. So it's not it's not random. So if you if you do uh, if you restart the fight and do all the stuff the same way, it will be it will happen the same. Which is common for any game with a seed. Any game with a seed should be um, if you do the exact same thing, it, you get the exact same result. Um. I think I like saving the block pot. We don't need to spend it. Now let's start with Cut Through Fate. Give him back that pressure points, please. And I'll go ahead and defend for the last bit. Uh, 
Uh, Cut Through Fate Shuffles could redraw pressure points. We don't really need Eruption right now, but it is pretty good. I guess I'll just take the Eruption now. Because we have Vigilance and Sands of Time. Um, I guess we're staying in Wrath Mode this turn. But Pressure Points is lethal. Cool. Alright. Establishment, Deus Ex Machina, and Brilliance. Um, establishment decosts Sands of Time twice a turn. Uh, if we pick Establishment, we could find a Meditate, which would be super good in the deck. Um, meditate and Pressure Points are good friends. No synergy for Brilliance yet, so I think it's one of these two. Um, we don't have very much Retain right now. You know another card we'd be really happy to see? Battle Him. Battle Him would fill up our hand with zero cost um, Smites that would ca cause our Cloak Clasp to block for 10 every turn. It's also a power so that we could modify hand. Yeah, this is a power too, so it decosts something. Seems pretty insane. Um, Day Six Machina is like minorly helpful, but I think uh, I think establishment is way too good here. Well, I guess we're taking energy relic. It's probably not ectoplasm. We do have four hundred money, so we could just not take any more money for the rest of the run. It's not a crazy idea. Um, it's probably not correct though. Um. Runic Dome has this kind of odd property where it's like, if you can take Runic Dome, it's usually correct to do so. Because it's it's very, like, skill testing, but it, like, it technically has no downside, right? Because enemies just do whatever they were going to do anyway. So if your deck isn't like, I use Apparitions to block, um, and I have to block on exactly the specific turn where they're attacking, or else I lose, then you should probably pick Runic Dome. Um... Yeah, the, I guess the, the biggest downside for uh, Runic Dome is um, Writhing Mass. Because if you can't predict Writhing Mass, it's like you just get cursed at some point during the fight. Um, and that's unfortunate. But like a lot, most fights in the game are very predictable. Um, so Runic Dome doesn't cost you much in those. It also um, prevents you from knowing if the heart is big attacking or uh, multi-attacking. Which is scary. Uh, Darklings don't really get free damage. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I mean, they're, they're not easy to predict, so you have to block overblock by a lot. But like this deck doesn't have any expendable defensive resources, so the only risk is that we would spend more energy than we need to on blocking. We do currently have a block pot, so like it's hard to know when to use that. Um, but I think when compared to Coffee Dripper, Runic Dome would probably cost us a lot less health. I think it's pretty likely that we're going to want to rest at some point. Coffee Dripper is very nice. Um, we don't have any sorts of healing so far, and Watcher isn't guaranteed to get any. We probably wouldn't take Bites because we wouldn't want to increase the deck size by too much. If this mummified hand was a bird-faced urn, we would take a uh, coffee dripper for sure. It's probably Runic Dome. But theoretically, neither of these has a downside, right? If you if you play the game, if you like win perfectly, right? They're both just four energy and no downside because you never rest and you never take damage from enemies. Um, so it's really just which of these, we, we're not playing perfect because that's impossible. So which of these, um, downsides is more relevant. I'll take the dub. Okay. Act two. 
Um, how do we feel about Act 2 question marks? Let's go look at them. Um, so there's the, the classic Act 2 question marks of ancient writing, uh, Council of Ghosts and Vampires that sort of like are so important. They change the whole run. Um, ancient writing we would use for upgrades. Bites I think we would actually probably take, presuming it doesn't cost us too much current HP. Um, establishment decks can do the, do the thing where once you get established, um, you never take damage because you have a, a million protects. I guess Establishment plus Protects is kind of dangerous with Runic Dome, because we might end up overblocking, wasting the Protects, and then um, um, getting murdered. I tend to shy away from Dome whenever I'm running a Wrath-based Watcher, because the exposure to getting it wrong and dying seems so high. Time for me to watch and learn. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but uh, maybe not. I might get it wrong and die also. Uh, we're definitely going to want to lean on the Calm Enter and Calm Exit side of the coin here. Uh, that's really what we're looking for. Although we do have a rush down, so... Um, I wouldn't really say we're Wrath-based. We took a rush down early, but we haven't really made much out of it. We need, like, a Tantrum. That that aspect is a little bit on pause here. Um, I think we'd probably take Bites. Uh, apparitions, I think, is a no with Runic Dome. Apparitions are not great. We also don't have Golden Idols, so there is the... Um, Forgotten Altar event lurking out there. Um, Augmenter is particularly good on um, Watcher, because Watcher has a good Orange Pellet's interaction with Fasting. Um, would we take a uh, Ritual Dagger? Um, I think no. A lot, we, our, a lot of our damage comes in big bursts with, like, Wrath, Sands of Time, and Pressure Points. Um, so I don't think we can afford to uh, hang around and Ritual Dagger people to death. So that event's not particularly good. Uh, Knowing Skull is obviously bad. Masked Bandits is good. We have a Conclude. So we should be able to deal with them with some urgency. But I think we're pretty excited about shops with the, the 400 gold. So we're likely going this way. And that sort of puts us onto this two elite path here. Uh, and probably taking two question marks before it. So we'll just do our easy pool, two question marks, a shop, and, uh, and then get into it. All right, Spheric Guardians first. This guy has a strict pattern that he does not vary from. Um, we're going to play pretty much every card here, because we've got a um, Mummified Hand Loop. We're going to cut through Fate for um, uh, Sands of Time, so that we can hopefully decost that. Uh, I'll take a Conclude instead, that's fine. Um, how likely are we to draw Vigilance next turn? It's like 50-50, and I don't really want to take 22 if we're wrong. Um, especially since we can't, like, kill him with pressure points very easily in this fight. So we're not going to Eruption. Okay. Cloak Clasp is particularly good in this fight, because, uh, he frails you. We don't care about Frail, because we block with Mental Fortress and Cloak Clasp. Ideally. It's not quite true yet. Um, I think I want to find that pressure points. Okay. And we're going to leave the rest of the cards in hand to get extra um, cloak class block. This looks like a mistake because I'm leaving a bunch, bunch of energy, but I'm not. It's not a mistake. Okay. Um, I think we're going to like eruption vigilance here. We have not played Rush Down, so Eruption does not draw cards. Eruption Vigilance blocks for 6 plus 8. Um, so that's 14. And then we're going to leave 1, 2, 3, 4 cards in hand. Um, so we're blocking for 16 total, taking 6. If we play Eruption uh, Pressure Points Vigilance. Seems okay. 
Is that monster train? I believe it is. I think that's actually the infernal train that runs through hell. It goes right next to my house. It's really irritating when the angels and demons fight on it. Um, Alright, he's attacking for 11 this turn. We are currently blocking for 6, 7. Uh, so double defend blocks out. Uh, presuming we don't play any more cards. Seems like playing Sands of Time would be fun, if nothing else. So if we play three cards and one of them is a defend, then we're still blocking out. So let's get this rush down out of here. And play... Um... Hmm. Which one of these do I play? Be nice to play Sands of Time when we're in Wrath mode. Yeah, also Sands of Time retains, so it's blocked for next turn. So I'm going to play the strike. Alright, back to needing to block for 22 here. Not super easy to do. Let's uh, shuffle and draw a card. And then um, I think go looking for Eruption. If we can find Eruption, then maybe we can Mental Fortress, Enter Wrath, Exit Wrath. Because we do have Rushdown developed now. Uh, nope, we're not going to be able to Exit Wrath. Okay, I'll just take Vigilance then. Do you think it's possible to figure out where you live judging by this train? Um, maybe. Um, you'd have to try pretty hard. Um, I don't. I don't believe there's a database of like where every train is right now. Uh, pretty sure eruption was lethal. Actually, yeah, that's correct. Um, great point. Um, I spent so much time thinking about how we were going to get his artifact charges gone that I just completely missed lethal. Um, I guess we're restarting this fight. So we can block for 9. Yeah, I'm not taking 22 because I've missed lethal. Thanks, B. Whoops. Um... <laughs> I don't know if I can repeat this fight reliably. This I did a lot of stuff in this fight. We started with Cut Through Fate this turn. Took the Conclude. And then played the powers in this order. And didn't play Eruption. I know I didn't play Rush Down here. I don't think I played Sands of Time either. Um, I didn't play Mental Fortress. Did I skip both? It seems like taking defend is pretty reasonable, given that he's about to attack for uh, 11. So this with this line we take one, that sounds familiar. Um... So now he's attacking for 22. We started with Cut Through Fate this turn. Did we play Mental Fortress Vigilance? Yeah, I think I'm off the rails here. Um, Mental Fortress Vigilance defense seems pretty reasonable. So we end up blocking for 21. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I played Pressure Points this turn. Um... And now we have lethal. Alright, well, we accidentally passed to the fight and did a better job. Not sure what we changed, but we changed something. Um, whoops. Empty body seems good. We have two uh, mental fortresses. Um, and very few stance exits. Um, we've been very reticent to enter Wrath. Um, even with the rush down, because we we only have the one exit. So I think we'll take any exit we can find right now. And empty body technically qualifies as that. Uh, library seems great. I think we're going to go read here and look for like a tantrum. Or meditate. 
or pressure points. A <laughs> um, lot of amazing cards here. Wave of the Hand, Foresight, Flurry of Blows, Pressure Points, Mental Fortress, Crescendo, Tranquility. A lot of takeable stuff here. Prey, even. Windmill Strike is not crazy with Eruption. I don't think we need the... It's more of a, like sort of an Act 1 card pick there, but... Uh, even Flying Sleeves is kind of pickable with the Establishment. Deceive Reality is actually pretty good. I don't think I want a third Mental Fortress. Um, Tranquility and Crescendo are both good, but they're both commons also. Um, Foresight helps us turbo through the deck faster, and it's an uncommon power. So we're not likely to see any more of it, and we've got Mummified Hand value. Um... It's a lot of stuff going for Foresight. Uh, feels like the deck's looking for a weave if we take out Foresight. We've already got two cut-through fates. Yeah, let's take a Foresight. All right, Red Mask Gang. Um, all right, well, this is an Eruption Conclude fight. Let's see if we can line up Eruption and Conclude. Uh, this fight, you, this turn, you always take 12. Um, so we just have to block for 12. So mental for double Mental Fortress Strike uh, blocks out. It's about the best we can get. Um... I think we're going for Romeo first. Um, Eruption Conclude does 24 damage, which is less than the 32 I'm used to with an upgraded Conclude. Um, so we have to get people down to 24 if we want to kill them with that. All right. So Romeo is dead to Eruption... Uh, plus thing. Um, all right, let's cut through fate on pointy. I think that puts him down to twenty-seven, which is awkward. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I guess we're, we're... So we're cut through fading to see what we get. It's awkward to cut through fade on Romeo because he's already dead to Eruption plus Conclude. But it's also awkward to cut through fade on Pointy because that leaves him at 3 versus the Conclude. So maybe we cut through fade on Bear. And then, like, Eruption Strike Conclude kills him. But I think Eruption Strike Conclude already kills him. Eruption on Romeo Strike on Bear Conclude. Because the Strike would do 12... Assuming we're not weak. Um, let's let's not assume that we're getting Eruption Conclude, because Eruption Conclude is super good, and that's a way to trick ourselves. Good morning, Captain Zippers. So we're going to keep prioritizing Romeo. Okay. Um, Vigilance Empty Body blocks for a hell of a lot. I think we're going to need... A lot of block this turn, so let's go ahead and get that now, while we've still got the energy for it. Um, cut Through Fate can draw us Sands of Time at this point. It's Sands of Time plus Cut Through Fate would kill Romeo, which seems like a priority. That is the Conclude. Uh, do we take Conclude for 12 AoE damage, or do we pitch all of these for a 1 in 6 chance at Sands of Time? Uh, I think we take the Conclude. And I think we're blocked out. Let's see, how much did they tap for? 12, 12. And um, what does Bear hit for? Is it also 12? 
Um, it is 20. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're not blocked out. So if we save cards in hand, we do block for more. It only save blocks for one, though. So I think we're just going to use the block bot. Oops, ah, crap. We have to use the block bot while it's our turn. <sighs> this game. Okay. All right, we played the Mental Fortresses, and we striked on Romeo. Good morning, Stixu. Grab him, bear. All right. So we cut through fate on Romeo, took the other cut through fate. Then we vigilance empty bodied for the block. And we cut through fate on Romeo again, took the conclude, mulliganed away these. Played the rush down, and then before we play conclude, we play the block pop. Okay. All right. Uh, we can Eruption to kill Romeo, Sands of Time to kill Pointy, and then we're in Wrath mode and we're sad. Um, eruption will draw two cards, one of them is this Foresight. We can make Foresight hit Sands of Time, maybe? Um... Maybe we can try and draw pressure points twice. So if we pressure points pointy, then eruption on Romeo, and then pressure points bear, I think we have lethal. This strike will do eight. So if we pressure points pointy, he's down to 11. If we draw another strike, we can strike him. Okay. Drew eruption again. Um, so strike eruption kills pointy. Or actually strike sands of time kills bear. Um, so we need to spend the energy pot to play all the cards. No, actually we don't. We can spend three energy to play defend strike eruption and then... Oh no, we need four energy to play foresight. And hit sands of time guaranteed. Um... But it's not lethal, right? We can kill either bear or pointy, but not both. Oh wait, no, we can kill both. Yeah, yeah. Strike Sands of Time kills bear, Eruption kills pointy. Okay. Okay. Um... Usually I like to skip evaluate. Um, I think it's still a skip here. Um, it does help us increase our hand size for cloak clasp is the reason to consider it, I think. Um, halt is quite good. Especially if we're going to be going in and out of wrath, which I think is our intention with the rush down and the eruption plus. We're not quite able to do that yet, though, so maybe it's a little bit early to take a halt. Uh, we're about to go to a store with a bunch of money, so I think we're going to see um, see what we see there before we start making decisions like picking halt. Yes, halt. Uh, if the insight gets decosted, hooray! Okay, what do you got for me, shopkeep? Pothios has talked to the hand. Inner peace. Man, just lucky for my Madden, for my uh, uh, weave that I'm definitely going to find in the run. What is Apotheosis hit? Strikes and defends, obviously. Vigilance concludes. Sands of time. Both mental fortress, possibly. The establishment upgrade is irrelevant. Foresight. A lot of good uh, upgrades. Does seem like a good Apotheosis situation. Also, presumably we're picking Inner Peace and Talk to the Hand, so it would hit those two. Uh, 
Um, if we buy the alpha, it would upgrade either beta or omega, which is cute. There's a waffle here. We're only missing 15 health, so it heals us for 22, which is not bad. So if we assume we're doing uh, Apotheosis, Talk to the Hand, Inner Peace, Card Remove, how much does that cost? 193, 283, um, 366. Um, hmm. It would definitely be possible to play Alpha. Um, I don't think it's quite necessary, though. Maybe Talk to the Hand is not good in this deck. We're just... It's its so good if we get the Weave. Or, honestly, a Flurry. Um, although Weave would be my preference. Maybe we're skipping Apotheosis. Maybe we can find a lessons learned or something. If we skip Apotheosis, we have tons of money, so we could do talk, inner peace, card remove, maybe even another mental fortress. I really like the pattern of having lots of card draw and having a mummified hand and a bunch of powers. We could try to Madness on pressure points. Madness is basically just like a shitty, um, uh, what's it called? Meditate. Um, hmm. There's not too many scales for war paint. I guess there's four defends. It's like vigilance is good. Empty body's okay. Just trying to think if I could get apotheosis and then upgrade it. Card remove is not amazing. I guess we just skip card remove and take the apotheosis inner piece. Talk to them. Inner piece is super necessary. Okay. Uh, we can buy a potion too while we're here. Or just lucky. For extra hypothetical weave value. Um, explosive pots is pretty decent in that too. About to go fight an elite. Alright. Turn one Apotheosis. Pog Champ. Apotheosis upgrades the Miracle. So it means we can play the whole hand if we want to. Probably don't want to because the whole hand contains an eruption. Probably just Mental Fortress Defend, then. Um, free Strike, I guess I'll play. Causes us to take one extra damage, but that's fine. Oh, it doesn't. I thought they both hit for 11 on turn one. Isn't that crazy? Uh, let's see if we can find with Cut Through Fate. Um, wait, we need Block. But we can play it Sands of Time now with Establishment. That has to be good. Yeah, because we can just murder Mugger. That's better than blocking. So 26 plus 9 is 35, so we can just kill him with those two. So pressure points on the looter. <laughs> this is one way to use Establishment to decost Sands of Time. It's not the way I was imagining when I picked it. Uh, 
Oh, red mask. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to remember to do weak calculations if you can't see their intentions. Ooh, that zero cost rushdown is really nice. Not only is it, it's a zero cost card, so it can't be targeted by other mummified hand effects, but also it's a zero cost card that decosts something else to zero. That just makes the hand sing. All right, let's uh, start doing stuff. Um, conclude seems fine. Okay, I guess that's the end of the fight. There's the tantrum. Now we're cooking. Uh, we get to go into the extra, the next fight with extra energy from Ancient T-Set. We're at 50, so I think we can afford to smith. Maybe it gets us to the second elite if we rest here. We do get full value of our healing. Uh, we get comparatively low value out of, of smithing now, because we have Apotheosis. So if we're not upgrading either Apotheosis or Establishment, uh, there's a chance that the upgrade doesn't matter. Um, establishment, because it becomes innate, so it, it happens before we have a chance to play Apotheosis. Uh, let's just upgrade the Apotheosis, though. It makes it easier to play. Okay. Book of Stabbing. All right, max damage here is 24. Expected damage is 14. It's more likely. Uh, I guess we're playing everything, including the Sands of Time. Uh, that would block for 15. Or 16, rather. Because we'd have one card left in hand. Uh, it seems okay. All right, most likely damage here is 21, 24 is also possible. Um, let's go through fate and try to find the uh, talk to the hand. There it is. I think we're gonna dupe pot the talk to the hand. This fight's hard and I respect it. Um, I am going to want to get the rush down down, so even though it costs me a, a health, I'll play it. Alright, he has triple attacked two totems in a row, so I believe he's forced to do... Or, uh, multi-attacked. Um, so I believe he's forced to do the 24 damage attack here. If he weren't doing the 24 damage attack, he'd be attacking for 28. Uh, cannot use multi-stab three times in a row. Yeah, so he's doing 24 damage here, exactly. Um, ooh, we have Inner Peace Tantrum. Um, all right, let's Tantrum, draw some extra cards. Looking for Apotheosis, basically. Didn't find it. We did find more ways of changing our stance. Um, Inner Peace Eruption is energy neutral and draws cards and blocks. So let's do that. <laughs> Vigilance Tantrum uh, costs two energy, but it also cost me my last way of exiting Wrath, though, so I think that's going to be... I'm not going to play that. Um, so I'll play the Vigilance. Uh, we've blocked out for sure. Um, I think I'll just play pressure, pressure points over Establishment. Establishment isn't super important in the deck yet. Uh, it'll probably be important later once we find a Meditate. But we haven't done that yet. I guess we're actually blocked out if even if we're in Wrath. So I guess I'll just go back into Wrath. There's the Apotheosis. Uh, so now I guess we just play the whole hand. Establishment, Foresight, Brush Points. Mm, I'm not skipping Pressure Points. But we're already blocked out. Okay. 
Um, seems like we need to find a way to exit Wrath Mode really badly. So I'll get rid of the Defend. Okay, Empty Body does. Uh, we could Empty Body and Tantrum if we're feeling cheeky. Uh, or we could just do a bunch of damage. Uh, let's take a Defend. Um, he's hitting 4. Let's see, it's not 28. Uh, it is 35 this turn. I guess we're killing him, huh? Because Tantrum does 24 and this does 32. Okay. Alright. Cool. Uh, Empty Mind seems great. A lot of card draw going on in the deck. Empty Mind gives us a little bit more. Uh, also gives us ways to exit and re-enter Wrath, potentially. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. We'll figure out what this card choice is doing. Um, okay, so basically the question at this card pick is, is Empty Mind good enough to pick? And if not, is Crescendo good enough to pick? They're both kind of on the edge. Neither one's, like, insane. Um, what does the deck currently look like after we've exhausted all the cards that exhaust? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six cards that exhaust. So it's a 19-card deck. I guess, uh... Seven cards. It's an 18 card deck. Oh wait, there's another one. 17 card deck. Sorry, I'm gonna count again. <laughs> one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight cards that exhaust. So it's a 17 card deck. Uh, doing a loop is not impossible with a 17 card deck, but it is highly tricky. It does feel like the deck is pretty close to being loopy. Um, 
I wish there was an Act 2 event that let you choose to either leave or remove all strikes from your deck or remove all defense from your deck. I don't think you'd ever choose the remove all defense, but just having an event that removes all the strikes from your deck would be great. Um, hell, even an Act 3 event would be reasonable. Um, hmm. I think Empty Mind is, it makes the cut. People are always criticizing ideas, saying they'd be OP, like... That's great. <laughs> you want stuff to feel good. <laughs> Things that feel good make games fun. No. We're facing them all with the curses. That's actually a pretty good idea. That's fine. But, like, if you make something that's OP, then you balance around it. That's great. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, sure. Okay, he's probably hitting for 24, um, so if we strike double defend, we block for 23, seems like enough. I'm going to go ahead and drink the Liquid Bronze, too. Not a super high-value potion, at least not in uh, the middle of Act 2. Um, and it does some damage in this fight. Drat. Um, Alright, let's start with a Cut Through Fate. A bunch of Mental Fortresses are useless this turn. Yikes. Okay. Uh, I guess we cut again. Uh, we have Rush Down Eruption Empty Mind, I guess. Um, he, I don't believe he can be debuffing this turn, so he's pretty much guaranteed to be hitting us for 24. Let's look up Snake Plant. Um... Most likely Charm, then Enfeebling. Can't use Chomp three times. Um, so he's always Chomp, Chomp, Enfeebling Spores. Because we're on a sense of 17 plus. Okay, so this is always Chomp. Um, okay. So he's hitting us for 24. You got pretty sour on the make everything feel OP philosophy after a not great relationship with Overwatch. What do you mean by that? Um. Boy, this is a tough one. I think I'm just looking for like what other cards are in here that are good? I guess they're pretty thin on the ground. It's like Vigilance is good, Defend is good. I guess I should just take Apotheosis. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Overwatch. Uh, what's, what is your... What do you mean by after a, a not great relationship with Overwatch? Just like you don't like Overwatch? <laughs> or... um, I guess we're blocking for four. Um, let's empty mine and try and try out, draw, like, Vigilance, Empty Body, Inner Peace, Sock to the Hand, basically anything. 
Okay. Inner piece, empty body, uh, is energy neutral, doesn't draw any cards, but gains seven block. He's definitely chomping again this turn. So we're getting hit for 24. Um, we could just play empty body defend. Um, tossing in the inner piece just gets us two extra energy. But the two extra energy is pretty useful because we can inner piece empty body and then we can like talk to the hand, defend, conclude. Why don't we just play force eight too? Um, okay. Um, you played it long after it ceased being enjoyable. I don't, like... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, lots of... Lots of people develop toxic relationships with video games. Um... And I don't want to say it's not the video game's fault, um, uh, but um, the uh, I don't know. There's a there's a limited amount that people can that developers can do to mitigate the bad feelings inherent in competitive multiplayer games, right? Because people um, people tie up a lot of their self worth whether consciously or subconsciously, in their, like, in their victories and defeats, right? And there's no way to make a competitive multiplayer where the player community does not have a 50% win rate, right? Because, like, half the people win every game and half the people lose every game. Um, so, like, everyone's going to lose half their games. Um, I don't think that really has anything to do with making things feel overpowered or feel good. I think that's just competitive multiplayer games. Um, get people into toxic loops. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> any, any sort of competitive, like, vaguely social experience um, uh, will uh, we'll get some people caught. Um... I think it's a, um, uh, I think it's a, whatchamacallit, uh, intimacy mismatch. So, like, the way that competitive video, competitive gaming experiences evolved is, like, you're sitting around the table playing a board game, or, like, you're sitting at a split screen playing Mario Kart against each other, right? And there's a sort of limited amount of bullshit that you can, you can throw at people if you're sitting around a screen playing Mario Kart together. Like, it's always just fun, basically. Um, but then when you just online match people, make all these, like, random strangers together, and it's just like, okay, all of you, pretend that you're in the same room, but you're not in the same room, but you can yell at each other, and you have to cooperate to win, and if you lose, we're going to say you're bad, right? It's like, whoa! <laughs> uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that to people. People don't like being on teams with strangers, right? That's just not fun. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit mystified by, by how popular um, multiplayer competitive uh, online matchmaking is um, with, like, League of Legends and stuff. It's like... It's, it's, it's just... There's a problem with toxicity in those communities because, like, there has to be, right? Like, <laughs> how could there not be? Um, it's like they're trying to solve it and, like... You know, those end of it, those efforts benefit humanity, right? By making people nicer to each other. So, like, I'm for them, but at the same time, there's no way to climb that hill. Um, Sands times lethal. Yikes! We took a lot of damage to that snake plant. Um, is tranquility in the deck? It comes upgraded for free because of establishment, also apotheosis.
Right. Yeah. Disembodied humans is a, a great way to describe the anonymity inherent in the internet, which unfortunately we are subject to in this community as well. It would be nice if we could all be together, but I, I think it would be kind of, I think I would be weirded out if 21 people were watching me play, play a video game in real life. I'm pretty sure that I would like have a nervous breakdown like immediately. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, I have to go. <laughs> um, Internet relationships are very odd. Uh, you need a certain amount of skill at a competitive game to enjoy it. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's the thing, right? It's like the reason that so I, I while I understand the problem with the like social aspects of online match made competitive multiplayer um, experiences or. Uh, competitive team-based online multiplayer experiences. Um, I also understand, like, games can't make AIs that are as fun to play against as humans, right? Because um, humans, like, you can find humans that are at the same skill level and that they'll be playing the same, like, chess game with each other, right? And that's that inherently, like, makes the game balanced. Um, which is really nice, and you can't get... Uh, like if you make it, if you make people play against machines and then you just ramp up the machines until they have a 50% win rate, it's not fun because it feels like the machines are cheating. So like having a skill match with a community, um, creates balance, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's worth it for the, the negative social implications with single player online match made games. It's, it's a little bit more acceptable, um, because like. The, you're in sort of an intimate experience with someone who's labeled your enemy, right? So you can just be like, screw this faceless person. Um, yeah, I, I agree uh, uh, a lot with people saying that like, it's it's really tough to, to be at the bottom of the, um, of the, whatchamacallit, matchmaking uh, list. Because it, it churns people out, right? Um, because you don't you don't want to be you don't want to be the worst person. Also, like in league in particular, there's a uh, there's a strong community of people uh, smurfing. So like they create a new account and then they just stomp a bunch of new people. Um, so there's really no way for them to protect the the newbies, right? Because the newbie community is is just constantly being smashed to pizzas by people smurfing on each other. Um, but this is, this is, again, I talked about the tattoo parlor principle yesterday. Uh, the problem with, with League of Legends is if you walk into that tattoo parlor today, because League of Legends is so old, they've all got their tattoos, right? Like, so if you're a new player to it, there's just no way to, to fit into that culture, right? Because they've got, they've got in-jokes and item builds and stuff that they've been, been working on for years. And honestly, on day one of League of Legends, it was like that because a lot of the people in the community were like, transplants from the pre-existing and equally toxic Dota community, right? Um, yeah. Um, there's a lot of problems with, uh, with social experiences in games. Uh, is Tranquility better than Skip? This question in front of us. That would be our third calm enter, Vigilance, Inner Peace, and Tranquility. Um, it's obviously no fear, no evil. Um, but I think our access to uh, free upgrades makes it probably worth it. Um, also, being able to draw cards with inner pieces is nice. We really need like um, that relic that makes you get three energy when you exit Calm. That one's so good at this type of deck. Mm, maybe Tranquility is not good enough. Maybe we've got a good balance right now. We don't want to mess it up. No, Tantrum is is way more, way stronger than. Um, so we've got two quote unquote two uh, wrath enters, but Tantrum is like basically three wrath enters by itself. So we kind of have like four wrath enters and uh, three call enters. So let's take another call enter. Um, this one has a choice. A turn up would have been useful a couple of floors ago. I think we're skipping this elite. I don't think we fight an elite at 15 here. Uh, 
Um, curse for shame. No. All right. Um, what's the max damage in the Centurion Mystic fight? Uh, Centurion can hit for 14 turn one. He can't use the Fury on turn one. So it's 23 because Mystic attacks for nine. Okay. Um, Pathosis seems a good start. Um, if we Tantrum Vigilance, we block out. Uh, I'm going to go use and, go ahead and use the Explosive Pot, too. It's really important you do 20 damage on turn 1 if you can. Um, actually, no. Sorry, I... Oh, wait. I was going to use Conclude while I was in Wrath Mode, but then that's stupid, too. Darn, I restarted the fight for no reason. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, maybe I'll Strike while we're in Wrath Mode. And then Conclude at the end. Yeah, that seems fine. Saves a potion. I think that's probably worth it. It does spend the miracle, though. So now she's got some room to heal. Okay. All right. Um, we're struggling to block this turn, so I'll go ahead and take the Tranquility, because it blocks for six. Okay. Great. Um, <laughs> as though I can see what they're doing. Uh, this seems amazing. I guess I'll keep the inner piece too to get out of wrath. Um, all right, so we're gonna play talk to him first because we don't want the uh, D cost on that, and then rush down. Hopefully, hit sands of time. But if it hits tantrum, that's fine too, or inner piece, I guess. It did hit sands of time. So tantrum on mystic, sands of time on centurion to kill him. Um. And then inner piece to exit wrath. All right. We're in wrath. We really only need one way of getting, uh, or we're in calm. We only need one way of getting out. So just take the tantrum. Fairly certain we've blocked out already, but I guess I'll keep playing cards, because I can. And go lethal. Okay. Great. That went well. Extra Mental Fortress. This one's upgraded. Um, I didn't take a second Mental Fortress a while ago, but that one wasn't upgraded. It probably doesn't... doesn't matter. Um... Because we have the apotheosis, but I, I kind of do want another mental fortress. Okay. Is that last one a question mark? No. Uh, Alright, we get to play apotheosis on one. That's nice. The defend is definitely happening. Um, I think we'll just play mental fortress conclude. It costs two health. Um... That does some damage. Oh, it didn't cost two health because we, we blocked out. Um, let's see. What's Shelled Parasite doing? So he did the big attack last turn, 21 plus Frail. We didn't get the Frail because we can't be Frailed anymore. Um... Oh, he always does foul on turn one, huh? I didn't know that. Um, cannot use foul twice in a row. So he's either hitting for 12 or 14. Those aren't much different. Um, and it's 50-50. 
Okay. Um, actually, couldn't kill him. Do we have lethal on both here? If we eruption and then tantrum on him. Yeah, yeah, the cat's, the cat's angry about attention. Um, if we eruption on Fungi Beast and then tantrum on Shelled Parasite, he takes um, 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 52. 24 plus 52 is 76. Which is not quite enough. And that's the extent of our energy. Uh, I guess it is enough with Explosive Pot. Um, and it seems like we might die this turn if we don't. Go ham. So let's go ham. I guess, does Fungi Beast ever kill us? Maybe we just save the... Um, the potion. Um, let's see. So he only... He hits for exactly 6 damage or he buffs. And we're already... Well, I guess he's hitting for 12 because we're in Wrath. So we're currently blocking for 8. So we take 4 damage, I think. Is Explosive Pot worth 4 damage? Yes. Okay. There's the Weave. Been looking for that. Um, we're a little bit less good than we were, like, here. Two cut through fates and a um, foresight. Make weave pretty good. Okay. Oof. Another fight. Snake plant. Probably hitting for 24 on turn one. Uh, we might be dying. Talk to the hand. Vigilance concludes. Probably the line. Maybe we can try to sneak a foresight in there. Uh, Vigilance blocks for eight. Conclude blocks for two. So we end up blocking for ten. It hits us for four. But then if we leave Foresight Eruption Miracle, we only take one. It seems like we need to take very little damage, so I think I'm going to pass on the Foresight. Okay, we need to cut through Fate to get us a um, something. Uh, Mental Fortress doesn't really do anything. We're in Calm already. Are we looking these then? I guess so. So now we could, like, rush down Tantrum to draw cards. Fit in Mental Fortress too. And then if we just, like, don't find a Wrath Exit, we'd die. Uh, only Wrath Exit is Empty Mind. I guess Empty Mind and Empty Body, huh? Let's also cut through Fate to try and find them. Um, but we're currently dying, right? So dying is kind of kind of the norm here. Our max block is 10, and then we would have three, six cards left in hand. So we'd be blocking for 18 total. We would survive at one. If he hits us for 24. Hmm. How likely are we to get an out here? There's these two and that one, that's it. But we also get Talk to the Head block from Tantrum. Alright, I'm doing it. Okay, that's a good decost. Hmm. Well, max block from here is triple defend, but I'm pretty sure that's not enough. Save the pressure points for block. Yeah, we died. 
Hmm. Maybe the risk there was not a good idea. We really bled a lot of health on hallway fights. It seemed like we were strong once we got set up, but we were not getting set up reliably enough. We like started with a bunch of card draw, two cut through fates and a rush down. And then we just picked a lot of not card draw and uh, slowed way down. Ended up dying with stuff like Tranquility and Empty Mind in hand. Um, Drat. See what was the what's the problem with this run? Maybe we shouldn't have picked the Runic Dome. No, it didn't really cost us anything. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We we like perfected the the Book of Stabbing and then died to Snake Plants. Snake Plants are rough, but we should be able to deal with them. Like you just need a way to block for twenty four. This is I have this problem every time I do Mental Fortress stuff. It's just like you have to combo to block, and that's just not a good world to live in. Um, you want your combos to kill people, but you want to block with just, like, cards that are in your deck. Um, so that you can do it reliably. Um, yeah, Mental Fortress is a trap. 